What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So in this one, we're going to be breaking down exactly what happened with the market today, where we see things going throughout the rest of this week, according to some very, very basic things that we've been talking about a lot on this channel. And we need to talk about this credit suite situation that everybody has been blowing up all over social media. How much of a risk is this at the current time? Are people blowing it out of proportion? Or is this an actual issue that we need to be worried about going into the end of this year? Now, there's a lot of things that have happened with credit suites over the last year or so that do kind of give rise to some concern over whether or not they're potentially facing another Archegos-like event which could be actually bigger than it was previously. But we're going to break down this entire situation here. So again, if you guys do enjoy the information and analysis that I provide for you guys in these videos here, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And if you guys do want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. So let's actually pull up uh, the chart of the spy over here and take a look at exactly what has happened today so far. So at the current time that I'm recording, we're up about 3%. Now, again, we do have room for some of these little relief bounces, but with what we've seen, how the price action has been reacting around these newer lows, you haven't gotten those giant knife candles or that cascading wave of selling yet. Now, with what we've seen, essentially with the news that came out today, which we are going to go over, again, I want you guys to think about one very, very, very simple question that you need to ask yourselves when you see price action moving. Compared to the news that is coming out, is the news getting us more uh, towards the light at the end of the tunnel and things getting back to some sort of normalcy or are things still neutral and heading in the wrong direction now with the news that has really come out there's some short-term fixes that are being shown to everybody but nothing in terms of any long-term fixes have really surfaced now again when we look at the price action of the spy here we could end up seeing this retest of about 370 before new lows and again the macd is losing a little bit of that bearish momentum here the rsi is now above its moving average if we look at the four hour here uh we are seeing the spy break above its 13 ema we are seeing the macd build some bullish momentum here too and the rsi is starting to crack above 50 the 80 X is losing that downtrend as well. So it's very possible that we are in for a little bit of bullish action. But this is most likely, in my opinion, going to serve as a retest. And again, I do want to highlight some of our members that are absolutely slaughtering it in the markets here. Donnie, Chanley, a lot of these people here are really, really taking advantage of the tools that we are providing with the most powerful actual trading algorithms out there for retail investors right now. If you guys do want to come to the best place to learn how to trade, make sure you guys check out that link down below. But again, when we're looking at the dollar today too, we did see the dollar slip a little bit, but more specifically, the 10-year treasury yield is coming down pretty significantly as well. Now, why might this be happening? Well, when we come over and take a look at this article right here, the UK scraps a proposed tax cut for the wealthy that sparked market turmoil. So remember about two weeks ago, they came out with this new tax bill and you saw the British pound absolutely tank. So much so that the uh, Bank of England actually had to come out and start buying their longer term bonds. Now, what this essentially did was provided some propping up to these markets and to the pension funds that were facing, quote unquote, a Lehman like event. And the UK saw this and said, well, we're going to scrap this tax plan. But when asked about if they are going to continue to buy bonds, they said yes. So what this whole thing could be is a little bit of a stunt so they could turn back on quantitative easing in the short term until about October 14th. That's essentially when this quantitative easing period is supposed to be over uh, in England in basically they're going to try and do all of these bond purchases before then now again you could see a little bit of yield compression across the board because of this and the currencies are going to be moving as well so definitely some things that you guys need to take a look into so we do need to talk about this credit suite situation though because there's been a couple of things that have happened over the past basically six months that we have actually talked about on this channel and I've warned you guys about. So I do want to bring this article back right here that we made a whole video on. Credit Suisse ready for, quote, good risk opportunities, says the new risk chief. David Wildermuth, who joined from Goldman Sachs in January, said the bank was moving the pendulum back the other way. Remember, this is back in June, June 28th, 2022, after ditching riskier clients following the catastrophic events the business suffered last year. It's the second time in my career I feel I'm as much uh, a cheerleader for taking on more risk as I am for reducing risk. 
The other time was right after the financial crisis. So they're coming out and essentially saying, well, this is a good market to be taking risk in. Now, that's not actually the case, but if you come down and look at the actual reasoning for why they started to take on more risk, it's outlined right here. However, its decision to rein in risk taking has hit revenues, meaning that the bank credit suisse is making less money now because they weren't taking on as risky clients and risky positions, leaving the bank under pressure to pursue more profitable business while also avoiding more missteps. So what they've essentially done here is say, well, we were not able to make enough money or as much money as we thought we were going to taking on safer clients. So we're going back into that riskier pool and taking on some of those more risky positions and dealing with riskier clients. Now, in this type of marketplace, that's probably not the best thing to be doing. Now, what people have been freaking out about recently is Credit Suisse's credit default swaps. But you can essentially view these as, as insurance against the bank's failure. Now, these positions and these derivatives are going to have a certain premium baked in. If you start to see the premiums or the cost of these derivatives go up, it means that investors as a whole are buying insurance against the collapse of Credit Suisse meaning that more people think that Credit Suisse would be basically failing. So the cost of buying insurance against Credit Suisse defaulting on its debt soared to a record high on Monday as the Swiss bank failed to calm market concerns around the strength of its balance sheet. Traders and investors rushed to sell Credit Suisse shares uh, and bonds while buying credit default swaps derivatives uh, that act like insurance contracts that pay out if a company reneges on its debts. Credit Suisse's five-year CDS soared by more, 100, uh, more than 100 basis points on Monday, with some traders quoting it as high as 350 basis points, according to quotes seen by the Financial Times. The bank shares were tumbling. The market moves were even more dramatic in the bank's shorter-term CDS, meaning that they're pricing in a higher probability that the bank is going to collapse sooner than expected, with one trading desk quoting uh, Credit Suisse's one-year credit default swaps at 440 basis points higher than on Friday at 550 basis points. So what you're seeing here is potentially, and if you look at a couple of other articles, you could be seeing people thinking that they're going to predict the next global financial crisis in this giant bank collapse situation, and they are buying these swaps, essentially lottery tickets against Credit Suisse in the fact that they could potentially fail. But what I want you guys to really think about here is the logical reasoning behind this. Yes, Credit Suisse is notorious for taking on a lot of risk. Now, when you think about what happened with Archegos, well, they were taking pretty significant losses based on one firm, but they ended up being okay. But if you look at the total amount of derivatives exposure in the overall market right now, well, according to a lot of these big banks, you can see right here, JP Morgan Chase, 3.3 billion, or 3.3 trillion actually, uh, in assets right here, total derivatives, 56 trillion. So this is the notional amount of derivatives. Now, if you look at Goldman Sachs here, about 500 billion with a total derivatives amount of about 49 trillion. And you can see here that there is about uh, $193 trillion dollars of notional exposure on these financial institutions um, according to all of the derivatives exposure that you're holding now what this doesn't necessarily tell us is the direction of this or if these banks are the counterparty to a lot of these transactions to which they would actually have to go out in the open market and hedge for if these are unhedged positions that is extremely dangerous if they are hedge positions yes the banks can take losses but they will be a lot less than what a lot of people would actually expect so for right now with the situation surrounding credit suites i know a lot of people have been pointing to the fact that the executive executives at Credit Suisse have been going around to clients and basically trying to assure them that they have a pretty strong balance sheet and they're going to be okay. And people are kind of trying to tie that into what was happening with Lehman back in 2008. Again, if a situation like this is going to unfold, it's going to take some time in order for this to happen. Credit Suisse just went through the Archigo situation. A lot of these positions are going to need some time in order to play out. And again, most likely what's not going to happen is just randomly tomorrow, Credit Suisse is going to declare bankruptcy. There's going to be some events leading up into this. But again, it's definitely something to keep an eye out for going into the future. So that is going to wrap up this video, guys. If you did enjoy the information and analysis that I provided for you guys in this update, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And if you guys do want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. So I hope you guys are having a great uh, first start to the week over here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.